accessing library computer data. Hi there cadets and welcome to another episode of Building the Enterprise D. Now actually in this episode we're going to be concentrating on one of the most important parts of the model. No, it's not the painting, it's not the gluing, it's the stand. The stand is perhaps the most important part of the model because it makes it secure, it makes it stand proud and most importantly it looks cool because the, there have been two incarnations of stands that have come with the kit and they have been rubbish. The first one was based on the Delta symbol from Star Trek and it only made the Enterprise stand about a couple of inches above the desk and it made it look like a ground vehicle rather than a starship. However, Round 2 decided to redevelop that stand but they did not have much imagination. They just used a black dome with a metal pole sticking out. Yes, it made it stand higher but it was boring. It's like, come on, if you have a really nice car you don't want to put crappy rims on them. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. If you've got a cool model, you want to have a cool stand. So we're going to address that. And I'm going to show you how I made mine. Now, I based this design on someone I found online, which I'll give, give credit to now. And But I have took it a little bit further because I wanted to be able to take the stand apart because I wanted to work out how to store the model if I want to put it away. So it's not completely static and st stuck all together. Talking of sticking, I had to learn how to weld. Yes, you can actually glue brass together, but I decided, let's go all in, let's weld. And I learned how to solder weld. Nope, it's not that difficult, trust me. If you know how to solder wire together, you can solder weld brass together, yes. All you need is a blue flame, which is like a torch. You need flux, and you need solder. The same solder you use to solder wire together. And Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, you've welded and it's so satisfying. However, in 25 years of making models, I have never had an accident until now. Yes, that was me last week. Uh, should I go into detail? Well, I'm not, I'm not gonna show you too much detail because I did not take those pictures. However, how did I get this? Well, I had my safety precautions. I had the brass strip, I had it in a vise. It was nice and tight. I had my safety glasses on and I made sure that everything was away. I didn't have a tie on or anything. And I started drilling into the brass. However, mistake. This drill was one of those home drills which wasn't variable power. It's either on or it's off, high speed. And when you're uh, cutting or drilling into metal, you don't need to go high speed. And what happened was, was that drill bit just bit into that brass, it ripped it out from the vise, and it turned into a helicopter. Ouch, yes, and so that injury could have been so much worse. And so I managed to switch off the power. However, because it was going such high speed, it went a couple more times before it stopped. And I learned from that mistake. So the next time I actually worked on it, work on smaller pieces. So if anything does happen, it's not gonna go anywhere anytime soon and it's gonna stay localized. And also just find yourself a variable speed drill. That was one of my lessons. Now. From making a stand, we are actually going to learn how to strengthen the Enterprise. And I have to say, for those who have actually worked on many Enterprise models, which has a saucer section and a neck, that neck is the weak point. Now, this design has been designed to be in space where there's no gravity, so that huge saucer can stay up aloft and proud and not worry about gravity ripping it back down unlike here. So there's an example right there. That was one of my models where the neck just snapped off very easy halfway through the build. However, I've learned from watching the Discovery Channel like many of us engineers do. Um, so a lot of engineers tend to strengthen joints not just by weld but by pins. And so I devised a whole system of pins to be able to be drilled into the neck and I'll show you how I've done that as well. Anyway, that's enough of me waffling. Let me show you the whole process of how I got to this stage. It's looking great. This is the weakest bit. This would snap very easily and believe me, I've made four of these and uh, just with a little bit of pressure or knock, this part of the neck will snap. So what I've devised, and this is something I recommend people do, is strengthen it with pins. Now, some, some model makers may, might think that this is overkill, but I think once you sp uh, start spending more than a couple of hundred hours on a model like this, you wanna make sure that it's not gonna break easily. So I've already put in 
five pins in so far and how I've done that as you can see there's a little bit of a flange right there let me just get a knife there so right there there's a little bit of a flange uh, for the neck part and it attaches to the engineering uh, top part of the model and if you look very closely I have drilled in three holes on each side so one two three and there's one that I need to still put in a pin. Now the pins that I'm using, well essentially what it is, it's just a brass rod. You can get this from any model makers or online and I've cut off a tiny little piece like this. Now what I'm going to do now is use some super glue and just pop in a little dollop in there and a little dollop in there like so. There we go. Now I made sure it's a tight fit which means I'm going to have to use a pair of pliers to jam it in there. The tighter the better because you want it to stay in there and not come out. And so there's no give either. Right, so there you go, there's a pin. Push that all the way in just to the point that it's flush with the, that surface of the engineering section. Just going to use my finger just to wipe off the residue super glue and for all those who do that just be careful uh, wash, uh, wipe your finger off straight straight afterwards and uh, there we go so there's all six pins holding or should i say strengthening the neck of the battle bridge section uh, i'll wait for that to dry i'll fill it and uh, shorten these pins later on these are the basic components to the stand. So we have a perfectly square brass plate, a tube, and four struts which I've made, uh, all of which are 90 degree angles. So the idea is that this will be solder welded on here and they will have, I will have these struts for them all the way around just to hold it in place because I really wanna make sure that the model doesn't fall apart or fall off once you place it on there. And so what you need to do, let me just move this out of the way. So to it basically, it's like using plastic and glue, but you're using brass and you're using a solder. So this is your glue and this is almost like your plastic. And just like your plastic, sometimes you might need to key it off to give the glue and plastic to bite into. So you can just see that there, how I've scratched up the surface using a, bit, a piece of wet and dry and I do that to every component. Just rub it down, make sure it's uh, it's got some grooves all the way around the surface so the solder can bite onto that. And I've done that for this as well. All these struts, make sure that they are all roughed up at the edges wherever the solder is going to be. Now I've done, already done a few of these, so I'm only gonna do these two now. There we go. Uh, you may have uh, may see that I've actually got a notch in here, and uh, because we're going to be using electronics, I needed to make sure that when, once the wires go through the tube, they can come out the other end, and they will hook up to the Arduino Uno unit, and also uh, get its power. Now, the first thing we need to do is use some flux. This helps the solder flow onto the brass otherwise it's just going to bead off or it's going to not take at all so let me just move that there so what, what I'm doing now is placing the flux anywhere where that solder is going to be there you go where it's going to take like so and then do the same thing on the other side. It's a quite a gooey substance. It's a bit, a bit like grease. Okay, and I'm using a cotton bud, <laughs> or the Americans would call it a Q-tip. You should be using a brush, but I didn't have a little brush, and I didn't want to ruin my uh, lovely artistic brushes. So I'll place that right there, like so. Make sure that's really square. Now, to make sure, because there's going to be a lot of heat involved, brass is a conductor, and I don't want it actually burning my uh, mat and my table. So I'm going to place it on a block of cork. 
me just pick this up. So, there you go. And it will help you see what's going on. So I'm gonna just move it slightly there. Now, I've got myself a torch here. It's super cheap. I'm, I think I got this for about five pounds off of Amazon. Uh, again, you can use ordinary lighter gas. As you can see, you have to be careful when using it. And the idea is to use the very tip of the blue flame onto the joint that you're gonna make the solder. Uh, you don't wanna do it right uh, in the middle of the flame. So, yeah, so you don't wanna aim there. You want the tip of the flame at the joint. And once it's hot enough, and you'll notice it's hot enough because the flux will start bubbling. And that is it so there you go so that's all done it's a that's a great thing about this solder it finds the gaps and goes directly into it and that's a as you can see it's a solid solder so using the same welding techniques I've made the inside of the Enterprise model so this is the, the armature the most important part of the stand because you do not want this falling apart once you put it all together so we've got two plates here so if you imagine this is the profile of the Enterprise D the source of sections around here this is the engineering section this is the engineering plate which will attach on the inside and this is the battle bridge plate as you can tell by the angle. Now this pipe here, this tube is slightly larger than the tube uh, on the stand so the idea it will go in here and a nice snug fit and stop around about here where there will be the plug and that's where the wires will come out from. Also I've included two holes here and here because I'm going to be inserting pins, so tiny screws, just to give that extra strength, just to make sure it doesn't fall apart once I glue it all back together again. So now we have the completed base. Yes, it's slightly ugly. It's got a lot of solder melted all over the place and markings on the Sharpie. However, this is just a skeleton. It just does the job and it's not meant to look pretty. And it's just functional because there's gonna be a beautiful display on the top of this, which I'll, I'm currently designing and build later on in the project. Now, it's a three part base. Here we go, we've got the secondary part, which is the main tube going all the way to the model, and also the armature, which goes inside the model to give it strength and to secure it to the base. So three components designed to be very simple in putting it all together. Now, this tube here is a slightly uh, smaller diameter than this tube here, which means this could just slot in here like so, nice and snug. And the sharp-eyed viewers can see that the hole where the wires come out is actually now blocked up. But not to worry, I'll actually add a hole in this tube later on so the wires can feed through and out to the power source and into the UNO. Now, we've got the armature. Now, this armature is kind of cool seeing it like this outside the model. Uh, you can see it's in two parts and this tube here is the same diameter as this tube here, which means this will fit snugly on this tube at the very top. So let's pan to the very top. So I've got a uh, peg here at the moment just to stop the armature from falling all the way down the tube once I put it on because later a plug will stop that from slipping all the way down. I'll just slot that on like so. Really nice and easy. And this is a great illustration to see the Enterprise diagram in the background because you can see how the armature works. You have the main core. It's almost like the warp core. The warp core is actually back here. but yeah, it's slightly forward and it'd be so cool to actually paint that or light that up but no one's going to see it so oh well it's kind of cool anyway that it's got a core 
you've got the main base. The main base plate actually fixes on the engineering section of the model itself. And then you've got the secondary base plate, which goes to the battle bridge and secures the entire model. And that is not going anywhere. And there we have the model on the armature, just temporarily. It's held together with pegs and magnets at the moment, just to give you an idea of how it all works. Now, there's the plates there that it will be glued onto the battle section gives it extra stability and if I just pan down underneath you can see the main plate here which is glued on the inside let me just turn that around and there we are you can see how it all comes together so thank you so much for joining me on this video vlog. I've not been well, I've had a bit of a cold, so thank you for bearing with me. But if there's a lesson you can take away from this episode, it's get yourself a variable speed drill and be very careful when cutting into or drilling into metal, remember? So the next episode, I will be concentrating on installing accurate parts to be precise brass etchings and making it look seamless because let's be honest the model is atrocious when it comes to detail compared to the studio model anyway if you've got a model open it up build it and make it so yes uh, i think i'm just getting cheesier when i'm saying these lines they will get better i hope library computer data